This is the update to the Z80 computer project that a couple of you have been waiting for. And as I said in the last video, I was trying to um, build a processor card that had buffers on it and um, all that sort of thing. It was very um, nice and clean, but it turned out um, it's very hard to do on a single-sided circuit board, which is why I have all those wires on there. Um, also a lot of jumpers. Um, but um, this doesn't work all that well. It actually doesn't work at all. So I'm abandoning the buffered card for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build just an unbuffered card that um, just breaks out the pins on the Z80 to, to the bus. And um, it also has a decoupling cap on there. Uh, this is much smaller too. This is about half the size. Um, and I hope I can just get away with that. I've seen a lot of designs online that um, actually just do it unbuffered, but they usually don't use a um, sort of a bus system like this. They usually have it all on one card. So um, I hope that still works. What I also did is um, I finally well, I finalized the um, sort of layout of the of the bus, which is this is how I'm going to do it. And this is uh, this has changed since the last time because it made it so much easier to um, route the things out down here. Um, so they're now just arranged in a fashion that um, they're easy to route from Z80. Um, but what I did is I still kept um, them compatible to uh, this utility card that I made before. Although, because the um, the single step or single instruction circuit doesn't work all that well, um, I think I have to do, I have to respin this at some point in time. Um, although not now. Um, my priorities is in getting this to at least execute a no up or something before I um, go ahead respinning any boards. But what I also am going to make is this sort of diagnostic card. I'm going to, after etching, I'm going to cut it off like this. But this is just um, a card that has. Um, all the, the data lines pulled to ground and then just a breakout to all the other pins so you can stick one of those um, cheap Chinese logic analyzers on there um, and actually look what's happening on the bus without making up a proper front panel yet. What is this? Flickery. Turn it like this. Yeah, that's that's no good. Um, no, I have to think about the lighting for this, but, um, yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is actually etch those two boards, put the Z80 in there, put the headers in there, uh, then plug it in and then we'll look at the logic analyzer and see, um, if it works any better than, than this card, which was being, producing very, um, very erratic results. It's doing this and then doing that is not really predictable what it was doing. Um, although I've got to say it looks rather nice. <laughs> um, if if I have this up and running, I maybe do um, do a proper buffer card at one time. Um, we'll see about that. I've got the two boards made and populated. Um, this one has a moderate amount of wire links, but it's certainly much better than the other one, which was just horrible to to uh, manufacture. Um, yeah, this is basically just a, the Z80 brought out to the bus over here. Um, and this is the other one. This is just a sort of uh, breakout board, so I can plug in my logic analyzer here. Um, it just pulls down the, the data bus to um, 
to 8 times 0 which is no op so if I actually get my cheap Chinese logic analyzer here and we'll plug in pin 1 to ground and the other three and use the red one here, channel 1 that will plug into 4 which is clock and then we have 2 left well we actually have actually more left but I just can't find the cables right now uh, this will definitely be enough to see if it's actually running um, plug this into 1, 2, 3 Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This should be a zero, and the other one will plug into a one. And if I just plug them into the computer over here. Oh, I'll do it on camera. So I'll put this one over here. Doesn't really matter where I plug them in. But let's put this here. Yeah, if this works, then the next step would be uh, to make up a memory board. I'll put the computer over here and just plug it into power. These lights are flickery. Uh, maybe I'll have to replace them. So I just captured some samples uh, with the logic analyzer in pulse view here. Uh, I captured 1 million samples at 24 megahertz, which is the maximum sampling speed. And uh, D0 is the clock, D1 is address line 0, and D2 is address line 1. And if we look at that, uh, we can see on the clock there's some, there's some sampling errors. Uh, it looks like because sometimes the clock is two samples long and sometimes three samples long. Uh, I think this is because the the clock is um, fairly fast compared to the sampling rate, so um, it's also not that clean of a clock. So uh, we get some some sampling errors here. But if we look down here to address line zero, and we'll just pretend uh, this is one. Um, because we don't know what the other address lines are doing, but um, this goes high as so we'll say this is one, and we go over here. This goes low. This goes high two, um, and then this goes high so with three, and then this would uh, actually overflow to the um, next line here. So we'll have a four there. So this looks to, to all the world like this is actually working, which is great. And we can actually also see that this is taking roughly one, two, three, four clock cycles, which is perfect because no op, I think, should be four clock cycles long. Um, I might be mistaken on this, but uh, I think this is true. So it seems to be working. Um, so the next thing to do would be to construct a, a memory board which will have some ROM and RAM and I think then we can actually run our first program on this computer.